There is something that's been bothering me that I need to get off my chest. I was on a stroll <laughs> with an A-list celebrity friend the other day, and he was expressing his concern over the ever-expanding role of artificial intelligence in our society. He was complaining that soon all art will be computer-generated, all cars will be self-driving, and you'll never be able to tell if a video is a deep fake. And I'm sorry, but I have to say this. We've got to stop the damn robots! At this point in the broadcast, Seth launched into an obscenity-laden rant about how artificial intelligence is going to destroy the world. Network policy prevents us from broadcasting his comments, but due to a technical issue, we were forced to air this portion of the show. In short, Seth believes that artificial intelligence is going to destroy our way of life. He seethed about deepfake technology and confessed he believes his cue card guy, Wally, has actually been a deepfake for quite some time. Wally was not a deepfake, of course. Wally was taking a vacation, and in his place left a cardboard cutout of himself holding a cue card that says, You look sexy, bitch. Seth's vanity prevented him from pressing the issue any further. Seth then spoke about how far AI has come already and said, watch this. Alexa, make me a dry martini with two olives. At this point, Seth's stage manager, Tom, angrily walked on stage, placed a glass of gin down on the desk, opened a jar of olives, and dumped the whole thing into the glass. What happened to Alexa, said Seth. You never plugged it in or took it out of the box, said Tom. <laughs> Seth then took a big gulp of his drink and said, nevertheless, the future is wild. Seth then all of a sudden appeared very anxious and scared and confessed he is afraid of the singularity, the hypothetical point in the future when technological growth will outpace humans' ability to control it and technology will enslave humanity. He then shouted, psych, and laughed about how he'll be on Mars with Elon while the rest of you idiots become man cattle for the robo-lords. At this point, Seth just started doing the robot with no explanation. So did Baze, his head writer. So did Jim, his security guard. So did Eric, Donna, Meg, and Susan from wardrobe department. And so did Eli, but Eli did it so poorly that it made everyone stop and get sad. Seth then confessed that if there was one kind of robot he would be into, it would be one of those chess-playing robots, saying, brains and brawn, that's my kind of fella, and adding, if it can move chess pieces, imagine what else it can move. He then looked around expectantly at his staff, hoping that somebody knew he was talking about his penis, but nobody would look him in the eye. Not Bayes, his head writer. Not Jim, his security guard. Not Eric, Donna, Meg, or Susan from wardrobe department. Not even Eli. He then looked to his cameraman, Buck, who had a big grin on his face. Buck knows what I'm talking about, he said, relieved. But Buck didn't know what he was talking about, because Buck was dead. An autopsy would later reveal that a fungal parasite had eaten Buck's brain over a week ago, leaving his preserved corpse standing in place next to his camera. And nobody noticed, because this is just what Buck always looked like. And, if you must know how this situation all played out, a janitor cleaning up after the show heard a terrible sound, turned around, and witnessed Buck's entire liquefied insides fall out of his anus in one big sack of goo. So, yeah, pretty nuts. The description of Buck's death was too much for one old woman in the audience, who then got up to leave. Unfortunately, she exited the wrong way, which took, like, forever. Finally, Seth suggested that if we all had self-driving cars, he could run over a cyclist and not get in trouble for it because it was the car's fault, and you can't put a car in jail. He then asked, what would that even look like, a car jail? I bet it would look something like this. Seth then pulled out a hyper-detailed, very elaborate illustration of what it would look like inside the walls of a car jail. There were car gangs, car prison guards, and even a car gym, where cars lifted car weights, which looked different from human weights. There were so many details, in fact, that one would have to pause the show to see them all. <laughs> Seth then screamed, and yeah, Waldo's in there too. <laughs> Sue me if you care so much. NBC would like to ask viewers to disregard Seth's opinions about artificial intelligence as they do not reflect the network's position and do not make any sense. We now resume our broadcast. <laughs> and if you don't like it, you can go live in the woods! Woo! Oh, that felt so good to get off my chest. We'll be right back with Kumail Nanyani.